Welcome back, everybody, to Young Review in Sports. My name is James Irvin, and um, it's going to be kind of like a tester video before we do get into this video, which I'm sure you all know by the title and the thumbnail, what we're we already talking about. But basically, throughout the offseason of the NFL, uh, things are going to happen. Big signings are going to happen. And then some little min minor signings are going to happen for teams. So I'm going to talk about the big signing, and then I'm going to include a bunch of the little signings. In. Or multiple big signings may happen, and I just combine it into one big video, and we call it Free Agency Day 1, or whatnot. Because big team signed last year, and then Tom Brady signed. So obviously you're going to do the Tom Brady thumbnail, but then you're going to talk about everything else. Or you could just, or I could just make multiple videos with other big stars, who knows. But we're going to be talking about some of the free agent signings, some of the cuts, breaking down what they're calling an NFL massacre, and that's what we're going to talk about. So, without further ado, let's get right into the video. And yes, Cam Newton today signed a one-year deal worth up to $14 million with the New England Patriots. And you know what? Contrary to what I've been saying about Cam Newton, I have kind of been harsh on him throughout the year. This isn't a bad signing for the New England Patriots. Okay? It's really not. They were 7-9. and nine. I thought they go 9-7. If Cam Newton didn't get COVID, probably 9-7. They were one play away from being 8-8. Eight and eight. They were probably a couple plays away from being 9-7. And, and maybe even 10-6. and six. New England Patriots, a lot. Their defense opted out a lot last year. They had lost a lot of players. And Cam Newton had zero out receiving. Although I do like to code Myers. Throwing the football, he wasn't that effective. Okay, it it really was not, it wasn't good. He was not good throwing the football. I didn't even think he'll admit that. And that's a fair, that's fair. He was not good throwing the football. Running the football, he was very good. Had a lot of rushing touchdowns, a lot of rushing yards. And you know what? He could lead drives and he could get them to score. Julian Edelman was injured. His number one receiver, gone. They had no tight end. Nikhil Harry can't separate. All their other receivers aren't good. Special teams, they were very good. Defensively, once they get Dante Hightower back, that was a big one they're missing. Once they get all their players back, they're going to be good. That defense was weak last year, and it wasn't it wasn't as good as it could have been. But you're still going to be great. You're going to get your players back. You can go draft Cam Newton some help. You're going to be just fine. You are going to be just fine, okay? You can easily win 9-10 games with Cam Newton behind the helm. We saw how he was when Cam Newton got COVID or he got hurt. He wasn't good. That team was even worse than what it was with Cam Newton. So what I'm saying is you can win games with Cam Newton if he improves his throwing the ball a little bit and maybe get some wide receiver help. They're a good football team. They can be a good football team. Cam Newton was a very good running player. Last year, he was bad throwing the football. But running the football, very, very effective. So yeah, let's take their players back, draft their players, and Cam Newton improves in the new in the system. That could be a very under the radar dark horse football team. Let's talk about it. another former Patriots quarterback. Tom Brady has signed a contract extension four years, and it keeps him with a void, and it just keeps him in Tampa Bay 2022. That's what Adam Schefter says. Don't really understand the contract personally. I think once I research it more, I will understand once we get more information about it. All we know is Tom Brady is staying in Tampa Bay for the next season. Why shouldn't he? He just won the Super Bowl. Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Gronk. The defense is getting back. They just got Levante David. They signed him to a contract. Everything, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good for Tampa Bay. Bad for Green Bay. But that's good for Tampa Bay. And they should be Super Bowl favorites again next year. Move on to something else now. We're going to talk about offensive line and specifically the Kansas City Chiefs. And this is some of the repercussions you make when you sign a $500 million contract. That's a lot of money. And you're not going to be able to pay everybody. Mitchell Schwartz, cut. Eric Fisher, cut. Center, free agency. Offensive line sucked in the Super Bowl. Mitchell Schwartz was a very good left tackle. He was very good. One of the top ones in the league. Top five. And you have to cut them. The teams that are going to have lots of cap space this year are going to be making some big moves. The Jets. Mekhi Becton. Mitchell Schwartz. Protection. That is great protection right there. The Jags. 
Cam Robinson, Mitchell Schwartz, protection. The Giants, Mitchell Schwartz, protection. Any team that needs an offensive tackle and is willing to pay big money and can pay big money should absolutely go out and get some of these offensive linemen. Chiefs are paying them. Patrick Mahomes signed the big contract. Offensive line, you start losing weapons slowly. Patrick Mahomes is going to have no protection. Patrick Mahomes is going to have zero protection. He had these guys in the Super Bowl, and we saw how good they were. How bad they were. They were bad. Throughout the year, they were good. So Patrick Mahomes is going to get used to the Russell Wilson lifestyle. This is what he's going to get used to. Running around for his life, having to make a play, needing just some help. Now the Chiefs' number one draft need is offensive tackle. You got to get cheaper at that position, okay? Look, basically what I was saying was, uh, we were going to have a Chiefs mock draft come out today. I was getting ready to record that, and then some other things happened. So Chiefs mock draft tomorrow, unless something big happens tomorrow, which hopefully it doesn't, and then we can get the Chiefs mock draft pushed right out there for you guys. I know you guys enjoy the mock draft. Be on the lookout for that. But, again, he's going to get the Russell Wilson treatment, or what he would have felt like if he was drafted with the Bears or the Texans. No offensive line, great receivers everywhere, and the defense is okay. Don't get me wrong, the Chiefs are still 100% the favorites, but it's just, look what Patrick Mahomes did in the Super Bowl. Nothing. He was under stress the entire time. He had to make the throw like this. He had to make that throw. It hit him right in the head. Patrick Mahomes can absolutely make this work. I still think they're winning 11 to 12 games. So, I mean, Chiefs, you got nothing to worry about. Just saying, takes a lot more hits this year. Lose a lot more games than what you're probably used to. And I are they still the Super Bowl favorites in the AFC now with these cuts? Yeah, I would say yes. I still think the Chiefs are going to be absolutely fine. Russell Wilson can make them Super Bowl favorites. Patrick Mahomes can make them Super Bowl favorites. You didn't have Patrick Mahomes. You're not. But then again, you didn't have Patrick Mahomes. You still haven't signed these guys. But it's what happens when you sign those big contract deals. You start losing... Key offensive linemen. And who knows? You can find someone easy in the draft. They could be an absolute steal. I'm not saying that it's going to be a problem. I'm just saying protection probably not going to be as good. Patrick Holmes needs to get used to this because he's going to be running around for his life trying to make the most that he can if the receivers just aren't making plays. And they just aren't making the plays. And that leads to more losses. I mean, if the Super Bowl is any indication of his future, good luck. But I still think they're going to win to 11 to 12 games a year. Probably at number one, their number one, number two seed. And be just fine in Kansas City. All right. Some minor contract signings. Mark Ingram to the Texans. Sound about that. Texans also are signing Christian Kirksey. Very solid linebacker pickup. Whitney Merciless is getting older. He's, you know, Christian Kirksey was on Green Bay. He can make plays, okay? He can make some plays. He's a very solid signing. Cheap, low risk, high reward player. He can clear. Be in there. Be your tackler. Look, this is what the Texans are doing, okay? The Texans are going to be a bad football team next year, especially if they don't have Sean Watson. So, with this, they're getting, you know, okay, not good players, or good, not great players, signing cheaper contracts, just having a little bit of talent there to win four, three games a year. That's it. You won four games with Deshaun Watson, expect two Without Deshaun Watson, I don't know. Okay, but you've got Christian Kirksey. He's a solid player. It's not a bad signing whatsoever. It's just more of you're still a bad football team, and that's all it is. You've also got Mark Ingram, and he's kind of old, and the Ravens cut him, and the Saints traded him away, and the Texans are still a bad football team. If they don't have Deshaun Watson, I'll predict them to go like 2-14, and 14. Or 0-16. That's basically what they're going to be. They're going to be very, very bad next year. And I think Houston, except that, because they'll finally have a good first-round pick unless they trade that away for another offensive lineman. Laramie Tunsil is who we're talking about. But, so some big stuff has happened. Cam Newton signed. They're getting their defense back. They can be a good football team. Texans are a dumpster fire. Patrick Mahomes' offensive line is being shredded apart. They're going to have to rebuild that from the ground up, it looks like. And Tom Brady is staying in Tampa Bay to go after the eighth Super Bowl. Second without. But with all that being said and done, let's see, you know, that's it. That's all we got. So thank you all for listening.